winding down this season. Two more weeks after this, then on to the postseason. Who will finish where in the East and West? Still to be determined for the next couple of weeks. This game today could go a long way to solidifying the spot for the Alouettes, a win. And they will host the East Division Final. This is the first lead the Alouettes have taken in this ballgame. Yeah, well, that tough start certainly put them in a hole, and it's not what you would have expected. As the Alouettes began this game with the win, you would have thought it played right into the hands of, of Anthony Calvillo and a team that has become known in the Mark Tresman era for relatively quick starts. Here's his numbers today. Much better than last week in Edmonton. There's the rush. And Buck Pierce got leveled by Diamond Ferry as he tossed that one sidearm. And two and out again means that Jamie Borum comes out. Now this has been part of the evolution of the Montreal defense this year. A big part of Diamond Ferry's role has been blitzing on passing downs. Here he gets a clean shot on Buck Pierce. So Borum again. Barry Floyd's at his 45. Not sure the ball's going to get that far, though. Borum uses up the clock here. And decides finally to run away and rugby-like. The kick goes over the head of Perry Floyd. And a good one by the Bombers. As Jamie Borum the running punt. And the Alouettes will start at their 40-yard line with a two-point lead. Here's what we have left in the East. Again, later today, the Hamilton Tiger Cats take on the BC Lions. And if the Cats can get to 500, 8-8 eight and eight could make it interesting. Should Winnipeg win today? Well, that's it. The Cats still have a shot at hosting a playoff game. But... Oddly enough, given the rivalry that's developed, the Hamilton Tiger Cats are Montreal Alouette fans. Right now. They are. Pump fake. Calvillo bombs away downfield. Looking for Kerry Watkins. The first time he looked to the veteran receiver here this afternoon. Well, they had the ISO all the way here, one on one between Kerry Watkins and Javon Johnson. Anthony Calvillo gives us the pump fake. But Javon Johnson didn't bite at all as Kerry Watkins didn't settle down. Read the feet of his receiver. Just stayed with the run. Javon Johnson, league leading seventh interception earlier in the ballgame. This crowd has been amped up. Calvillo goes deep again for Richardson. Comes back and he has it down near the 25-yard line. Jamel Richardson working against Brandon Stewart and wins the battle cleanly. 45-yard gain. Well, apparently you can keep Jamel Richardson quiet for a half, but that's about the limit. Second big catch, big gain from Calvillo to Richardson here in the third quarter. Brandon Stewart right with him, but Stewart can't get the head around. Richardson makes a fine adjustment to the football. Well, obviously, he knows what Paul Lapolis <laughs> talked about earlier big players making big plays at the right time so Richardson is done moving close to 100 again Calvillo stays in the pocket and down near the five yard line stepping out of bounds is SJ Green and now Anthony Calvillo is starting to find some rhythm well he sure is particularly with his top receivers SJ Green and of course Jamel Richardson Three straight passes. He's been biting on the corners of the Blue Bombers already in this third quarter. Only six minutes in. More than all of his yardage in the first. Well, Matt Dunnigan's halftime comments seem very prophetic right now that the Owls weathered the storm. And we're going to find their groove. There's a little hit screen to the far side. S.J. Green inside the five-yard line. Be now second and goal. Well, now this bomber defense will be up against it. Can they hold? Will the Alouettes finally be able to find the end zone here? Highest scoring team in the CFL. 
down to 12 points so far. Without a touchdown. To the end zone. An errant toss from Calvillo. Again, was looking for Kerry Watkins. And the Alouettes are going to go for the points here. Well, a good decision the way this football game has gone. Kerry Watkins at the bottom of your screen. Open for a brief second early. Calvillo just unable to get the football out there. Sean White, this is a chippy. 12 yarder. Easily through. Five for five. Sean White leads the Blue Bombers 15 to 10. His name lives among the pantheon of great Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Jerry James, a Canadian Football Hall of Fame inductee. Grey Cup champion, also a guy who played hockey with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Not too many two sporters these days. Kid Dynamite is with Sarah Orleski. Jerry, Rod Black was just talking about how you played for the Bombers, but you also played for the Maple Leafs. You're the only player to have ever gone to a Grey Cup final and a Stanley Cup final in the same year. You've got to tell us, how did you play both sports? Well, I was lucky, and, uh, you know, we had a good football club in Winnipeg at the time, and we were really quite good, and I was lucky to catch on with Toronto. And, and I, wa I wasn't playing that much with Toronto, but I... I filled in, a, and that was the first time that uh, the fourth line was ever introduced into a hockey punch in like that in 1960. You had the opportunity to play at the old Osborne Stadium. You were here with the Bombers when this stadium opened. What makes this stadium a special one? Well, it, it, it was something new. Like, you know, like when the old Osborne Stadium, there was only 6,000, 6, 7,000 seats. And now the Winnipeg Stadium came along and it doubled, or like 15,000 people. My God, we were, we were in, in dreamland, you know? So, I mean, and now look at this place. Well, it must be nice to be able to come back and watch the Bombers. It is. Thank you so much for this. Thanks so much. Great Jerry James. Paul Walder's interception. Alouette's instant field position. Brandon Whitaker to the red zone. His biggest romp of the afternoon. Let's go back to the interception by Paul Waldo on the corner again. This is an Alouette defense decimated by injury this season. Waldo comes into the lineup over the last half of the season and now has a pick. Yeah, Paul Waldo reacting to a ball deflected by Ramon Guzman. Comes up with that turnover. A lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Guzman, the linebacker, dropping into that zone, got the hands up in a ball that Buck Pierce tried to get in behind him. Here's another interception throw over the last few weeks. Calvillo fires. And down inside the five-yard line goes Whitaker. Whether he's getting the rock on a handoff or in the air, Brandon Whitaker, multi-purpose back, another 14-yard pickup. And again, the Alouettes are sniffing end zone. Well, Montreal definitely rolling as Winnipeg just tries to find a solution, hoping to get out of this third quarter. The Alouette offense is rolling with the wind at their backs. Absolutely stymied in the first half. Now the Bombers have held the Alouettes to Sean White's field goals. But now it's first and goal inside the five-yard line. There's the handoff. And uh, they will not get in. Only a one-yard gain from the short yardage guy. Aaron Diedrich will now go to the sideline. The Alouettes tried to give a different offensive look there with both Diedrich and Whitaker on the field at the same time. Whitaker sliding out to the slot. There's another huge play. For the Blue Bomber defense. The Alouette offense that hasn't been able to penetrate that goal line. Can they? Will they? Yes, they do. Touchdown, Brandon Whitaker. Suddenly, Canada in Stadium falls silent. Oh, the Montreal Alouettes' persistence. 
has cracked this Winnipeg defense, wearing them down in the third quarter. Winnipeg's inability offensively to sustain drives since they scored in the early going. Starting to catch up to them now. Ninth touchdown of the season for number two. 22 on the board now for the Alouettes. Shop it. Wet touchdown of this football game. It all began with a turnover. Paul Waldo's interception set the stage for the Brandon Whitaker drive. Up the middle, catching the pass to the flat to set up first and goal inside the five. And finally, number two, punching it in. So turnovers playing a huge role in the Blue Bombers' quick start in the first half of this ball game. The Alouettes showing that turnabout is fair play here in the third quarter. Game is absolutely turned around. The Blue Bombers in control in the second quarter. Again, not getting any points on the last play. Not get, being able to get Justin Polardi in place for field goal on the last play. Because of the wind, they're going to have to physically tee it up. Sean White moves one deep now near the five-yard line. Dion Beasley. Carries it up near the 25-yard line. And the story for the Blue Bombers, again, it's oft-repeated, is this inability to sustain any momentum offensively is starting to cripple them. The decision was made. Remember, they won the coin toss and deferred out of the gate, made their choice in the second half that they wanted to finish with the wind, taking the wind in the fourth quarter. But that puts a lot of pressure on their defense here in the third. As the boys in the studio alluded to, do not let the Alouettes and give them a crack as they did. And balls loose, but Garrett was down at the bend, but don't break defense that time for the Blue Bombers. Broke. It's been a combination of Sean White field goals and that touchdown drive engineered by Calvillo and Whitaker. A well, big part of the issue, I mean, you talk about a bend but don't break defense, any defense is going to break when the time of possession, Montreal's time of possession is about double what Winnipeg's has been in this football game. One team sustaining drives, the other just not. Alouettes lead the CFL in a time of possession. The Blue Bombers near the bottom of the pack. And once again, they spy Garrett. And he's well short again. Another two and out. And the Blue Birds come out here. Well, it's a combination of factors here, Rod, as not only are the, is the Blue Bombers' defense getting tired because the offense isn't giving them any kind of break, but also the swing and field position because of Montreal having the wind right now. Montreal keeps getting the ball back. You throw a turnover in as well, keeps getting the ball back with a relatively short field because of that wind, and it's all compounding against the Blue Bomber D right now. Well, that turnover by Waldo, the difference so far, the turning point so far. Again, Jamie Bourne, this time he decides to run and kick. Bad decision. Kicked it with his left foot. The ball's up for grabs. Alouettes will take over at the 29-yard line. Could not have turned out any worse. We want well, Paul Apolis can't be happy. There is improvisation, and then there is improvisation at the wrong time. This one reeks of this. Uh, Jamie Bohr rolling to his left. We've seen the rugby-style kick before, but, I mean, if you're going to do it, it's got to be executed perfectly. You've got to make a decision. And here, given the situation, very costly. You look at that punt. No yards plus a five-yard penalty for no yards. They lost five yards punting the football. Alouettes capitalizing on some bomber errors here. Look at that move. And Brandon Whitaker gets hit hard but hangs on. And I hope that that white thing that came flying out of his helmet was just a mouth guard. Watch this. What a move here on the spin. A phenomenal move to lose Merrill Johnson inside. Well, that 
was a mouth guard or one of the jaw pads from his helmet that popped out on that impact with Marcellus Bowman. Really a must stop here for Winnipeg. Calvillo again. Oh, and coming back to the football, Brian Bratton. There is a penalty flag. It's holding against Alouette. This one may actually go against Brandon Whitaker. He had to tackle the blitzing linebacker, Merrill Johnson, on that play. Holding Montreal number two. Penalties decline. Third down. So decline. They'll bring out Sean White again, and the Bombers will force the Alouettes into a field goal, but really a gift. Still, the three points. White's been perfect so far, and this one will be from the 29 yard line. There you see the call. Perfect six for six is Sean White. Stands the lead to two converted touchdowns. Now time to check our Pure Later sack attack brought to you by Pure Later. Tackling hunger across Canada. Check. Winnipeg Blue Bombers looking to lead from wire to wire in this department. The Alouettes led by John Bowman and Anwar Stewart making a late push. This is a game, though, that has really escaped Winnipeg's grasp. Hold the Alouettes to nine points through two quarters. Put up 16 here in the third quarter, and the Bombers are going to have to hope that the wind at their backs, they can have the same success because Buck Pierce is growing increasingly frustrated right now. Buck Pierce just appearing to be completely out of sync with his receivers right now. This wasn't the case. This, as far as Pierce and the receivers, wasn't how they finished the first half. They botched the time management. But a couple of key completions along the way that moved them to a thin field goal range late in the second quarter. Under two to go in this third quarter. Here's the catch. And again, short of a first down. Corey Watson. And I would assume that Jamie Borum might take that rugby kick out of his arsenal this time. Yeah, whether by his choice or coach's decision. You've got to play it straight. It goes back. We talked about this with Perry Floyd as a returner. You have to understand situations. I think the same goes for Jamie, Jamie Borum operating this punt team. And former Bomber comes back. Line drive kick. This is down near the 42. And looks like a no yards flag was thrown down there. Again, no return. But let's take a look at Jamie Borum making his first start in a return to Winnipeg. And of course, one thing about Jamie Bohr, I'm not shy to hand out a hit. Then he started with the rugby style. And go! A couple of very good punts pitting the Alouettes deep. Going cough and corner. And the not so good. And the last botched rugby style kick. Again, takes over from Mike Renault, who are the Bombers. Put on the sideline this week. A couple of botched kicks last week. We're all struggling lately. Keeping his attitude up, though. Hoping to get back in the lineup. For a minute to go, third quarter. Again, Calvillo downfield in a hurry. Trying to take advantage of the last minute with the win. with Jonathan Hefney and Brandon London going nose to nose. Well, as the Bombers have seen all season, it might come down to a turnover again. Their defense creating a spark. Their offense has done nothing. And we saw their special teams let them down a little bit moments ago as well. 
Here's a big rush now on Calvillo. Good protection though now. He swore. 